Hello students and welcome to this video on AO3 evaluation skills. So this is a part of the exam tip series. Um, AO3, we'll talk about what that is in a minute, but we're going to look at um, what is an AO3, the AO3 rubric and how to structure your answers. And these questions are worth a lot of points, so this is really important. So let's move on. What exactly are AO3? Well, we'll, get, we'll go through these again. Um, we've done these in previous videos. So AO1 are knowledge. So this is basically, do you know the textbook? So this is definitions, things like that. And they're normally worth two marks. AO2 is linking to the case study. So you're going to be using appeal structure. You're going to be making points, linking to the case study, etc. These are normally worth four marks. And then we're moving on to AO3 today, which is where you're going to be required to make a decision. I and mean, I call this the evaluation section. And these are usually worth 10 marks, but in certain parts of the exam, there are other 17 marks and, um, and things like that. And AO4 we've, we've done as well, which is maths and diagrams, and these are normally worth four marks. So what are AO3 questions? These are also called um, extended response questions. Another way of saying extended response questions is essay. And so these are generally the part of the uh, exam that students like doing the least because, you know, a lot of people don't like um, writing essays. But we're going to go through it, and um, I think you'll see that it's not too bad once we've gone through all of this. Um, and the key thing here is it requires students to make a decision. So you might be given something like, should a business pursue a strategy? So should they extend the product life cycle? Should they go public, et cetera? Or should they choose option A or option B? And obviously you'll be told what option A and option B are. So in both of these situations, question, this one here is a yes, no. This one is a, should we go with option A or option B? And so most questions are, look something like that. Um, it comes up paper one and paper two, section B, um, and uh, it comes up um, in paper three for HL only. Um, and it will include um, an AO3 command term, which we'll look at in a minute, um, and they evaluate, examine, discuss, etc. cetera. And uh, on paper two, section B, this is worth 10 of the 20 marks. So we'll look at that in a bit more detail in a minute, but you could already see that it's worth a lot of marks. So for these case studies in, papers, in uh, paper two, it's worth half the mark. So it's clearly a really important skill that we need to master. So just to emphasize that point, so paper two, section B, uh, this is just an example. It comes up in other parts of the paper, like I said, but um, here you're given a case study. Um, part A is normally AO2, AO, sorry, AO1 worth two marks. Part B and C are normally worth four marks and they're usually AO2 or AO4 skills. They might break these up into like B1, B2, both worth um, two marks, but they'll off, they usually be an AO2 or AO4 skill. Um, and then part D is where you get the AO3 extended essay response, extended response. Um, and again, you can see that it's worth 10 marks out of the 20. So really, really important. So what are the command terms? I'm not going to go through these in, in detail, but remember the command terms are will always be part of the question and it indicates to you that it's an AO3. Um, so the way you can see it's an AO3 is you can look at the number of marks. So if it's worth 10 marks, then it's an AO3. If it's got any of these command terms in there as well, then it's also an AO3. So we've got compare, con compare and contrast, contrast, discuss, evaluate, et cetera. You can, you can go through these in your own, in your own time. Um, but pretty much all of them require you to make some sort of decision or to look at two sides of an argument. And I'm going to show you some examples in a minute. So let's look at the AO3 rubric. So this is taken from the guide. Um, and like I said, it's worth 10 marks. So in order to get nine or 10 marks, then you need to do these four things. Um, and you, in the guide, you can also see that seven, eight is this, five, six is this, but we want to focus on what a, what a nine or 10 out of 10 looks like. So what are the things that we need to do? Well, the first thing is this thing that says clear focus on addressing the demands of the question. I think this is a very convoluted way of saying answer the question. And so it's saying you've got a clear focus. So you're, you're, you're always talking about the question. You're not going off on a tangent onto other things. You're not waffling about things. So your essay is about the point. You're talking about relevant arguments and you're not waffling and talking about other things. Relevant and accurate use of business management tools and theories. 
So during your essay, you're going to use BM terms. So you're going to use the terminology that you've learned. You're going to use the theories that you've learned. And you might also use the BM toolkit if appropriate. And um, in some situations, as we'll see in a minute, they'll actually give you something to use in the, in the essay. So they may give you a part of the toolkit that you must use. But in general, we want to use good terms. We want to use any theories that we've learned. Um, and I'll go through some of those in a later video. Okay, next up, relevant information from the stimulus material is integrated effectively to support the argument. So this word stimulus material is a, just a case study. So in the, in the question, you're given a case study information about a, a company. And so you want to make sure that you're using that. And this is where you use your peel structure. If you use your peel structure, then the L is for link. And you're going to be using information from the case study in your answers. Arguments are substantiated and balanced. So substantiated means that your arguments are justified. So when you say something, you justify it. Um, and you're using appeal structure. So if you use appeal structure, then you will be justifying your arguments because um, the PEE is point, explain, explain. So you're making a point and you're explaining your arguments throughout. So again, if you use appeal structure, then these last two bullet points are already covered. And again, you're, you're coming to a conclusion um, and it is justified. Balanced arguments means that you're looking at the pros and cons of both sides of the argument. Um, so we'll look at that in a minute, but you need to make sure that you're looking at all sides of the argument. And then one which I, I think is new for the new exams is limitations of the case study or stimulus material. So it's effectively saying the information you're given in the exam, what are the limitations of it? What are the weaknesses of the information that you've been provide, provided? And so I think there's two things you could look at. You could look at what information is not included, typo, that should be is. Um, and also, is the information reliable or biased? So if you've been prevent, uh, presented data that's been given by the company, then you could say it's potentially biased because it's been given by the company. So, um, and I think you can do this in the conclusion and we'll see that in a, in a structure in a minute. So let's look at some example structures. Um, so I've got structure one, pros and cons essay. So here we've got evaluate. Remember, evaluate is your command term, whether company X should go public. So just a reminder, go public means go from being a privately held to a publicly held company. And in this situation, the answer is yes or no. And so we can look at the pros and cons of this argument. So of all AO3 essays, you want to start with an introduction. Very brief, don't, don't write too much. Um, three sentences, just introducing the issue. And then the main body, you're going to look at the pros and you're going to look at the cons. So this is the pros of going public and the cons of going public. And I think I always say aim for six peeled paragraphs within the body. So you've got pro, pro one, pro two, pro three, con one, con two, con three. And here, this ensures balance. Remember, we have to be balanced. And so by looking at the pros of the argument and then the other side, the cons of the argument, we're going to be ensuring that we've got a balanced argument throughout. But we also need to do these three, these things for all of these six paragraphs. We need to peel all of these pros. So we're going to be writing a little paragraph for each pro and a little paragraph for each con. We want to be using BM tools, terms and theories. Again, use the terminology we've learned in the syllabus and refer to the case study. But if you're using the peel structure, using then the L is going to be the link. So you're going to be constantly referring to the case study throughout. In your conclusion, state your conclusion explicitly. They should or should not go public. And then justify why. Remember, we need to justify our arguments. So here we can justify why you've come to this conclusion. And then at the end, limitations of the information provided in the case study. So put a couple of sentences saying, um, the problem with my conclusion is that we don't have enough information or this information is biased or whatever. In a future video, I think we'll, we'll go through that in a bit more detail. Okay, here's another example. So this is structure two. So in this situation, again, we've still got a pros and cons structure, but we, now we've got to use the toolkit because the question, this is an example question, using the data provided in table three. So we need to use the data in table three. Other information in the stimulus, which is we normally have to anyway, and a BCG matrix. So we've got to refer to a BCG matrix. Recommend whether the business should introduce a new product into their portfolio. Typo, it should be into. So in this situation, it's still a pros, cons, because it's still a yes, no essay. Um, and it looks identical to structure one. 
However, in this situation, I've kind of given an example way that we could talk about because we've got to talk about table three, the stimulus, which we do anyway, and the BCG matrix. So I think the pro one, we could talk about the BCG matrix, pro two, table three, and then pro three, other information. And then the same for cons. I mean, you don't have to do that. Maybe your pro one, pro two is both about the BCG matrix, but you get the idea. We want to make sure that we're talking about all of those three things throughout our essay. Otherwise, we're not following the demands of the question, which is one of our requirements in the rubric. Um, another thing I would do is for the BCG matrix, I draw it, definitely draw it. If, it's, if it references a BMT tool or a matrix or something like that, draw it. So in Pro 1, before I introduced a Pro, I would definitely draw it. You could even draw it in the introduction if you wanted to, but I personally would do it here. Um, and another example of a structure is the option one or option two. So recommend, there's a command term, whether company X should use strategy Y or strategy Z. Now, this is not a yes, no. We have to make a decision between Y and Z. So again, we do an intro. And now I would do half of the main body about strategy Y and half of the main body about strategy X. And that's how we get the balance here. We look half the time at strategy Y and half the time at strategy um, Z, sorry. Um, the biggest mistake I see here is students say, let's do strategy Y, and then the whole essay is about Y, and they, they just don't talk about Z at all. And you lose a lot of marks if you don't do that because you don't have balance in your argument. So um, when we talk about strategy Y, I might do two pros and one con, and strategy Z, two pros and one con. Now, you might say, well, maybe what about if I've got one pro and two cons? I think that's probably okay. Just to make sure you're doing pros and cons of both strategies, and you should be mostly okay. And again, we're peeling, we're referring to the case study, and we're using all of those terms. The conclusion is they should choose either Y or Z. Again, it's a little bit different, but we choose Y or Z, and then three sentences justifying Y, and again, there's the limitations of the case study. There are lots more different structures that come up. They all follow the same basic idea. We'll do those in a later video. So some final thoughts. You ought to be writing about two and a half pages of A4. Um, again, if you've got big writing, then you're going to want to write more. Um, smaller writing, obviously, write less. Um, but you've got an intro conclusion, and you've got six peel paragraphs as a minimum. Feel free to write more. If you've got time, write more. As long as it's well-structured and it follows all the arguments, the more the better to some extent. But again, make sure you're not taking time away from other questions on the exam paper. I think it's basically lots of AO2s together. So I think the practicing your AO2 peeling skills, I think is the number one recommendation for the exams, I would say. If you get your peeling correct, everything else kind of comes from that, I think. And if you fo focus on the structure, you structure right, everything else comes from it. Right, that's it for that video. We'll do another video on AO3s. I'll see you then. Thank <laughs> you.